in Europe's bailout business, who profits from bank rescues in the EU? That's the subject of a new report by the Transnational Institute, an Amsterdam-based NGO. I spoke with the report's co-author, Saul Trombovila, in the European Parliament. Your report, what does it tell us today that we don't already know about the banking crisis? This report is the most comprehensive one that has been done since the crisis in 2008 to understand who benefits from rescue packages in the EU. We focus on one side on the huge concentration market on the audit uh, services because 61% of the audit market share is dominated by big four in the EU. This goes to 80% in countries like Spain or Italy. And for big corporations, this is massive. For instance, 98% of companies listed in the London Stock Exchange are audited by Big Four. So it's a huge concentration of market in the audit industry and we believe it would be good to have a specific regulation to avoid this huge concentration of market. So we believe that this report will provide to European citizens to information that can be very useful to, to, to elect the representatives and to know if they're actually tackling the consequences of the bailout business in the EU. We are again relying on private companies to supervise our banking sector and we saw how in the banking crisis actually giving all the capacity to the market is not the best solution because it, there has inefficiencies. So we should be worried about possible new crises and possible new inconsistencies in the way we deal with our banking crisis. Are you concerned that the Trump administration going for financial deregulation will lead to Europe doing the same simply to stay competitive? Yes, that, that's, a, that's a possibility. And we saw how when the European banks were copying the model of the, of the US banks, had very bad consequences. So, for instance, Deutsche Bank was one of the main investors on what then is, were called toxic uh, financial products. So usually what happens in the US, it's copied in the European Union. I hope this time we have capacity to actually go in a different direction. Does the European Central Bank give any indication that has learned the lessons of the past? We see a positive development in some of the new legislation that is being implemented in the EU. For instance, the banking union now advocates for a bail-in instead of a bail-out. Still, we need to see if this actually saves cost to taxpayers. In theory, it will, because uh, the taxpayers will be called after the private investors are called in. So that could be a, that could be a, a good development. However, again, this huge centralization of power in the ECB and the so far outsourcing its, of its mandate, it's a development that they would like to, to be avoided. How can that be avoided? Well, we explore in our report the, the possibility to promote public banks, not only because public banks are proven to be more stable than uh, private ones, but also because building public capacity to control financial banking affairs is very necessary. We see that often in the bailout business, companies are called for advice, and even though often they provide poor advice that could have been much better, we still call them again. Why is that? One of the reasons that we lack alternatives after two decades of financialization and believing that the market is the best solution, the public has lost his capacity to manage financial banking affairs. And this is very important. People get salaries, pensions, unemployment benefits through banks. So having public banks could be a, a good way to avoid that if new crises come, we have the capacity in a democratically controlled manner to manage our financial troubles.